All right, so a couple weeks ago I had the idea to, uh, now that my Jeep is complete and it's running, I still got a couple issues I'm chasing down, but for the most part, uh, it's definitely drivable. So I had the idea to uh, put a full-size American flag on the back of my Jeep, and I wanted this done before uh, Fourth of July weekend. And I really enjoy Fourth of July. It's a very patriotic holiday, and it's uh, probably one of my favorites. So it's a lot of fun for me. Fireworks, flags, patriotism, um, Bud Light, right? You can't forget that. Just a lot of fun. And I thought it'd be really cool to be able to drive the Jeep around with a, uh, you know, a full-size American flag on the back of it. So I got online and I started looking around for these things because my original intent, I'm just, hey, I'm just going to buy one of these things. They can't be that expensive. And I was wrong. I was very wrong. They are very expensive. And so then I went to YouTube and I uh, looked up, you know, uh, Jeep flag holders. And there's a lot of guys out there that have made their own, you know, flag holder, own version of a flag holder. And uh, so this is my version of a flag holder. So Jeep, this is Jeep Update 68, and 68 is going to be making a badass American flag holder for your Jeep. All right, so I'm pretty excited to get into this project and get this thing built. And I've got about a little bit less than a week to build this thing. And it's not the construction that takes a while. It's the, the priming and the painting and letting the coats of paint dry. I'm going to rattle can this thing. It's going to look great. And if all goes according to plan, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to drive the Jeep around uh, with the full-size flag on the back. And that's going to be pretty awesome. All right, like I mentioned, I'm really excited to uh, get started on this project and get this thing built. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be really cool uh, to drive this thing around with the uh, flag on the back of the Jeep. Just really, really cool. Really excited about it. So let me show you guys uh, the materials that I have here. So this is just two-inch square tubing, and this is just a scrap piece uh, that I use to kind of test fit things. Um, I've got some scrap steel over here over the years just accumulated from various projects and uh, there's the two inch piece that'll actually cut uh, the piece that will go into the hitch because um, this piece right here is not long enough again just a scrap test test fit piece all right this is a, uh, a hitch lock um, had that laying around in the garage so that worked out really well uh, a couple of caribbeners and I'll show you how that uh, where these things tie into in a minute um, and I did have to buy a one inch hole saw. I did not have a one inch hole saw, so I did buy that from Amazon. And I also bought uh, these eye bolts. And certainly you will need a flag. Uh, my flag is, um, gotta love it, made in the USA. An American flag made in the USA. So um, I won't buy a flag that's not made in the USA. But uh, more importantly than that, um, if you're going to have this thing behind your Jeep and it's going to be exposed to heavy winds, you need something pretty heavy duty. So, and I'll show this flag to you in better detail. Uh, but this is a nylon flag uh, with embroidered stars and embroidered uh, stripes. And that's going to hold up a lot better to wind. Um, certainly you can buy a much cheaper flag, um, but it's not going to hold up uh, behind your Jeep in heavy winds. All right, so the basic concept concept of how I'm going to build this is this piece will go into the receiver. Uh, obviously, the receiver lock will go in there like that, so I'm going to have to drill a hole uh, through this side and then also through this side, and that's what uh, this big drill bit is for. So that should take care of that and make short work of that. Um, then, so picture this in the, in the receiver hitch, and then this uh, one-inch hole saw I'm going to use to drill a hole for the pipe. Now this is a uh, black pipe that I use for uh, woodworking and I use them for clamps and they're threaded on the end so you can thread on your, uh, well, let me show you one. So that's kind of what they look like and you can buy those ends and then you can buy the pipe uh, just like at Home Depot. And the pipe is not very expensive if you do have to buy it. But uh, luckily for me, um, I didn't have to buy one because I've got one. And the reason that I want to use this particular pipe, you can see at the end there, I don't know how well that'll show up, but it is, there you go. <laughs> this pipe is bent. So this is going to be my uh, sacrificial pipe since it's already bent. And I kind of already drew a line right there that I think will take the bend out. And I just hope that I have enough length from here to the end of the pipe to, to, you know, to put the flag up where I want it. And if, you know, and if not, if it's not long enough, uh, after cutting the bend out, 
um, then I'll just sacrifice this guy over here because that one's straight and it doesn't have a bend in it. All right, so I'm getting off track here, but uh, this goes into the back of the receiver. The, the hitch lock goes in there, and again, drill two holes, and then the hole saw will come down like this right at the end, and I'll drill a hole um, through here, and then the pipe will kind of sit in there like this at a 90 degree angle and go and clear, you know, clear the spare tire. So I have to measure and make sure this piece is long enough to where it clears the, the spare tire on my Jeep, which is a pretty good sized tire. It's a 35 inch tire. Um, so I'm probably going to have to make this piece pretty long. And then once I do that and drill that hole and I get this uh, pipe put in there, I'll be able to weld that in. And then I can also weld it in here, at least about half of it. And if I'm Depending on how this hole saw works through this metal, which is probably three sixteenths of an inch thick, so I'm a little skeptical. Um, I may go all the way through if I can and drill two holes, and if I do, I'll be able to, you know, weld around the bottom of the pipe and then also the top where it sticks out all the way around, and that'll make a pretty solid connection for this uh, flag holder. All right, so what I'll do with these eye bolts is I'll drill a hole through the pipe. And that will go through the pipe. I'll probably cut the excess off, the excess threads off. And then I'll take this caribiner, hook it through the, the eye, and then hook it to the grommet in the flag. And that should be all she wrote. That should, be, uh, that should hold it really well. So I should say once I fabricate everything and get everything welded up, um, I will uh, sand it all down and then paint it just with some rattle can uh, Rust-Oleum. And I'll tell you why. It's because that's what I have. <laughs> so I've got couple cans of flat black in there, and I think flat black is going to be perfect for uh, this project. All right, last but not least, a uh, cold beer. And nothing more patriotic than uh, Bud Light, in my opinion. And if you look at the blue of the Bud Light can and the blue of the flag, pretty close match. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. All right, so let's get to building on this thing. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably cut a section of this pipe off, or this square tubing off, and then carry it up front and... Get some actual measurements of how you know how long that piece actually needs to be but i don't want to haul the whole 10 foot stick up there so i'm just going to cut about three feet off and then take that up there All right, what you just saw me doing there was uh, taking these ends and just kind of cleaning up these ends. I put a slight uh, chamfer on the very end, and that's to kind of help uh, help this thing slide into my receiver hitch because I have my rear bumper line x and it's a little bit tight, uh, and it was really tight uh, when I did the test piece right there. So I just thought I would kind of clean that up a little bit and hopefully make that go in a little bit easier. All right, I'm ready to go up and test fit this piece and get the uh, length. Uh, to help me with that, I'm going to use this drywall square, and I will put it on the square tubing like this and help me determine the length of this. So let's go get this thing measured and cut. All right, so there's the uh, two-inch uh, receiver in my uh, rear bumper. This is a uh, rock-hard 4x4 rear bumper. A little bit of Line X residue in there, um, and again, that's why I kind of cleaned up those edges of our test piece. And ultimately, what we're trying to do is clear this back tire. But you can kind of see how this needs to come out to make sure we clear the back tire. All right, fits pretty good. I like it so far. I'm not going to go all the way back. I don't want it to hit that uh, the rear cross member, but uh, right about there is good. So I'm going to mark that spot right there, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. But more importantly, so I want it close to the back tire, uh, but obviously I don't want it to hit, and that looks pretty good right about there all right so you can see I drew my line there and you can see that I left myself about an inch and a half kind of the width of the uh, drywall square I just put this on the ground to kind of get it out of my way but you can see I drew my line there 
and you can see that it's uh, plenty of clearance uh, for the tire. And you also have to remember that the way I'm going to mount this is I'm going to drill a hole in the uh, two inch square pipe and I've got to make sure I leave enough room there. Initially, I wanted to draw the line here, but once I would have mounted the pipe, it would have hit the back tire. Um, so I'm giving myself about the width of this uh, drywall square to uh, mount the pipe. So that should, that looks pretty good. That should work. So if you watch Jeep Update 67 in there, I mentioned that I have a uh, rear axle seal leak, and there she is. Leaking pretty good. So not good, and uh, that's next on the project list. All right, so as you just saw, I got my uh, hole for my hitch lock, and uh, you know, I didn't really measure this. I just got the biggest drill bit I could find, so let's see if this thing fits. Oh, that is nice, nice and tight. I didn't want it loose because I didn't want it to rattle around, and boom, there it is. Perfect. All right, next up would be on this end, on this end, uh, to drill a hole with the hole saw right here, one inch to fit the pipe. All right, so that uh, one inch hole saw worked really well, and uh, this worked really well also. All right, you can kind of see the concept now. Um, that's in there, but it's really too tight to go any further than that. So I'm gonna have to do some grinding on this just a little bit to get it to uh, go in and come out the bottom a little bit. But before I do that, before I invest the time in this pipe, I wanna make sure, I wanna go test fit everything and make sure that this pipe is as long as I need it to be. Um, and that everything uh, lines up and is working so far. So let's go test it. All right, so test fitting this thing in here and uh, this thing fits in there pretty good. No problems with that aligning. Now I just gotta check this uh, hole here. It definitely clears the back tire. Um, looks pretty good. I'm liking it so far. All right, so there's the pole just kind of stuck in there. And honestly, I think that's like perfect height. I know I just said that looked really good, but uh, honestly, um, this pipe is just too short for what I for the for the look that I want. So this pipe is like four inches, or I'm sorry, four feet and about three inches, um, and it's sitting next to a six foot pipe. See if you can see the difference there in the lengths. Now, I kind of test fitted the six foot pipe, and it is definitely too long. Um, so I'm thinking something about five feet is gonna be perfect. Um, so I'm not gonna use this pipe. I thought I'd be able to use the one that was bent, uh, but that's okay. So I'll sacrifice this one. This is six foot and I'm gonna cut it down. Well, I'm probably gonna cut it down to five and a half uh, to start with and then just see how that looks and then uh, cut it down uh, to five feet after that just cause uh, you, know, you, can, you can only cut this thing once. So um, I wanna do it right. All right, so there it is cut down to uh, five feet and perfect i think that is exactly where i wanted it and it's even going to be you know about two inches less once i get it in there so i think i'm good All right, so I did some off-camera uh, work here. I put a cap 
on the end. Uh, got the welds ground down a little bit and uh, two holes drilled for the flag. One at the very top and I also put a uh, cap on that end as well. Just makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, certainly not uh, perfect. Um, but I'm going to clean this thing down, hang it up, let's get it painted. We're almost done. All right, so there she is all put together. Got the flag on, got it uh, painted up. Everything looks great down here. Clears the spare tire. And here's how I did that. So I put those eye bolts through the holes I drilled, the ribboners through the grommets in the flag. There she is, boys. Tell me that isn't cool. What do you say we go for a ride?